<laughs> right. Yeah. So I had this, I was having this feeling of like, where is, what's going on? Why is it happening? Because it's been happening my whole life. And then I suddenly get this like dead period. Mm-hmm. And I was wondering, and I just, I didn't say anything, but I was just thinking it. I guess I was thinking it really loud um, because I was getting, I went to see a friend of mine and I got back to my house really late at night. I think it was like 2 a.m. And it was one of those like super blood moons that night. Mm. And she texted me. She's like, oh, the moon looks amazing. You got to go outside right now and see the moon. And I was like, okay. And I was like, yeah, but I'm tired. So I start getting to bed and I get this ringing in my ear. It says, go outside. I'm like, okay, listen to the voices. (laughs) So I go out to the back and I look up and it's cloudy. I'm like, I don't see no moons. So then I go out to the front yard. I still didn't see any moon, but I went out to the front yard and I look up and a ship dropped out of the sky and it just stood there for like, a second but it was right above the trees it was huge (laughs) wow and it just took off so me thinking like where are you they were just letting me know hey we're still here we're watching (laughs) right right yeah I, i don't i know it in like when i i got past life regressions uh some of the first ones I ever got like after getting the first hypnosis I got was for ET regressions but after that I started looking at the past life stuff and mm-hmm. that was another one of those like am I am I am I different and it was like asking the universe and then out of nowhere my grandma goes you're an alien I'm like what she's like yeah, <laughs> I don't I don't know where you're from but you're an alien you're you're just not from here you're different I'm like thanks grandma <laughs> <laughs> she knows yeah <laughs> takes one to know one grandma right yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah so uh but yeah i, I had i had a, a memory of me as a star i was a red dwarf that mm. was interesting uh not a lot of action in that life but there was a lot of sentience <laughs> <laughs> then i That's was like crazy. this yeah. woman well, we come from stars yeah. Yeah. We come from stars and we're like, yeah. we've, our consciousness wants to experience itself as everything. So yeah. to go through these experiences and just collect them. And I, I can feel myself in every life collecting information, mm-hmm. you know, and I've had yeah. like these dreams of me and other life experiences and other bodies. And I was like a scientist going through the galaxy, collecting information and things. And those was a really interesting experiences. And like, even when I had the past life regressions, I was always like some sort of scientist or information gatherer or something like that. One of them, I was uh, on this alien world and I had this cone head. Uh, I was very large and my job was to assemble children. And they asked, what, do you, what is it that you do? And I said, I assemble children. And I was like, that's so weird. But what I did is I... I was like, I basically cloned them. I put the DNA together and then I would match the body with a soul. Mm. So I, I literally assembled children. <laughs> <laughs> literally. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. crazy. Wow. Yeah. So then children weren't born from no. the parents. Okay. No, not, not just, in that civilization. On that planet. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Wow. It's really interesting. Yeah, totally. Going back to uh, the Tony Rodriguez, you you said something that I'm kind of curious about on like the more of the darker aspect of it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know that the, they did the children in order for them to the train. Like there is an aspect of that that kind of stood out for me too. But I, I'm curious mm-hmm. to to hear um, what stood out for you as well. Yeah, that stood out for me too, uh, especially the. Mm, the trafficking part of it and Mm -hmm. the um the the psychic the psychic training Mm -hmm. because i was a psychic kid you know when i came back to when i was (laughs) placed in this life i guess you could say Mm -hmm. and i was uh yeah i mean i could see through the veil basically and see premonitions and things like that but um but my family didn't think it was I was raised Catholic, so my family didn't think it was very, you know, they didn't understand it, and it scared them, so I pushed it down. 
so yeah, that did that uh, that did um, speak to me, especially the sex trafficking. Mm -hmm. There's something he said in the book. It was like when he got taken, then had his whole experience, and then put back. He said he didn't look at people the same way. You know, he mm -hmm. didn't look at like women the same way. It's like he lost his innocence. Yeah. Yeah, and that like thinking back like how I I was when I was young. Uh mm -hmm. I never I don't know, I, I think some part of that was missing in me too. Same here. Yeah. 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 Not having a childhood that was a normal, innocent childhood. Yeah. From what I remember of my childhood, very little. There wasn't it wasn't I was terrified of the world. I was uh painfully, painfully shy and uh just basically didn't want even want to be around people. Yeah. I don't know if I didn't want to be around people, but I certainly felt alone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like nobody could understand what I was going through. I couldn't talk about my experiences with anybody. Right. If I did, they didn't understand. You know, I'd invite my friends over because they could see it too, but they're just, <laughs> like, oh, that's crazy. <laughs> it's not for everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Like, why is, like, I remember with my friend, we were walking down, because like, I lived up in the mountains. Um, like, the way my bedroom window faced, it was in the direction of East Eddy and Mount mm. Adams. Oh, wow. Okay. And oh, so, duh. duh. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so lots of craft sightings that we had. I was in Oregon. Uh, lot, hmm. lot going on in Oregon. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we were walking down. We were up in the mountains, walking down this gravel road. And I remember looking. We were like, is that the moon? That can't be the moon. Why is the moon in the forest? <laughs> <laughs> It was this big, huge clump of trees, but the moon was right there, like setting in the forest. I'm like, that's impossible. But both of us are just sitting there like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I I um, started uncovering a lot of memories of being in the mountains because my family has um, property in, in the mountains in Oregon. Um, where my grandparents homesteaded some property up there. And so we'd go up there a lot, my dad and um, my parents were divorced when I was really young, but uh, we'd go camp up there. And so there was a lot of experiences that came up for me in the mountains with that ships and extraterrestrials and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. And when we got to high school, I me and my friends would uh, sit outside my window at night, smoking joints and watching the lights move around in the sky. <laughs> oh. <laughs> By the way, so my mom went to sleep, of course. But <laughs> <laughs> did she? Did she ever see ships? She saw. She said she saw ships when she was young, but my mom doesn't remember most of her life. Okay. No, she doesn't. She's she's always had memory chunks, like just okay. huge gaps of memory missing. You know, yeah. She's had experiences where uh, she went some like. She went somewhere once, and it, she said the only time she took mushrooms, uh, she woke up downtown somewhere in somebody else's clothes. Oh. Didn't know how she got there, where she, you know, on what happened. On mushrooms? Wow. I think, I think it was on mushrooms, the only one time she took it. But, you know, she's had a lot of other experiences, too, where she has just missing gaps. Yeah. You know, she was, uh, she was abused, and she mm. was actually trafficked herself. Yeah. you know when she was young oh, um, that's that's sad yeah but sh she's also gifted so seems to be a theme there yeah yeah seems to mm -hmm. be <laughs> yeah. so you know i um 15 20 years ago as i was having conversations with my guides about all this uh i guess it started around 15 years ago where they were telling me that they that i was put in had these experiences so that um they could see i take that back they were able to see through my eyes okay the experience mm -hmm. my life experiences and so i was 
chose these experiences and chose to be like a spy, I guess you could say, yeah. or a conduit so that they could see through my my senses. And then I saw an interview on Michael Sala channel. Um, do you ever watch his stuff? He's got some really good, he has a lot of um, space program, secret space program people on there. And I can't remember his name, but he's, he did a lot of interviews. I, I don't think he's done any anymore, but he's had some really crazy experiences where he remembers being at a lot of the, um, the bases like, um, Dulce, is that what is it called? Dulce, yeah, New Dulce. Mexico? Dulce, mm -hmm. yeah. He remembers being there and having clones. But he said that he was told by the Arcturians that he is Arcturian, that um, he was also a plant or a spy, or whatever you want to call it, so that they could see through his eyes and infiltrate these programs because they couldn't get into the programs from the outside. So we had to come down here and be infiltrate these programs so that they could see what was going on that makes sense you know and it's it also makes sense when you when you say that and i think about that being that popped up and it said that and it was so surprised at my answer mm. or my response which was really out of the blue you know like i was surprised at what i said i was like why did i say that but uh <laughs> uh it makes sense, though. And, like, I've always had this feeling that I was being watched and they're, they're never separate. I remember this period, too, where, like, uh, you're, you're probably familiar with that feeling with being a contactee or whatnot and having these experiences. And you go a long period without, and you're like, did I do something wrong? <laughs> <laughs> Come <Right>. back. <laughs> Don't forget about me. <laughs> Don't forget. I miss you. Where'd you go? <laughs> right. Yeah. So I had this, I was having this feeling of like, where is, what's going on? Why isn't it happening? Because it's been happening my whole life. And then I suddenly get this like dead period. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering, and I just, I didn't say anything, but I was just thinking it. I guess I was thinking it really loud um, because I was getting, I went to see a friend of mine and I got back to my house really late at night. I think it was like 2 a.m. And it was one of those like super blood moons that night. Mm. And she texted me. She's like, oh, the moon looks amazing. You got to go outside right now and see the moon. And I was like, okay. And I was like, yeah, but I'm tired. So I start getting to bed and I get this ringing in my ear. It says, go outside. I'm like, okay, listen to the voices. <laughs> so I go out to the back and I look up and it's cloudy. I'm like, I don't see no moons. So then I go out to the front yard. I still didn't see any moon, but I went out to the front yard and I look up. And a ship dropped out of the sky and it just stood there for like a second, but it was right above the trees. It was huge. Went, wow. And it just took off. So me thinking like, where are you? They were just letting me know, oh, hey, we're still here. We're watching We're still you. here. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. That, that makes me think of a memory I had as a little girl uh, that came pretty quickly to me as I was opening up where I'm standing on the ramp of a ship. And um, I'm being dropped off, and I'm I was like seven, I believe, and I see uh, I see a being standing in the. There's a lot of light coming from the doorway of the ship, and I see a being standing there, and he's in and he's wearing a robe, and I know, and I call him Papa. I know he's my Papa. That's what I call him, Papa. And I'm upset, and I say, "Don't leave me here, please, don't leave me here." And he shows me that. He says, I get emotional talking about, that um, we're not going anywhere. And he shows me that we're just in a, in a different um, frequency. He showed me like a ceiling fan where we're faster. We're moving faster and faster, but we're still here. We aren't, haven't gone anywhere. We're still here. We can still see you. We're still with you. We're still here. We're just moving. Our frequency is faster. Mm -hmm. And he showed me that with his fingers, uh, his fingers. And um, not that it helped a seven-year-old, but... But I understand that now. <laughs> so what did what did you think back then when he's showing you? You're like, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't yeah, I don't believe that it um made any difference. I was still upset. I, yeah. I needed it for later, obviously. But yeah. 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 So um yeah, I don't remember it really <laughs> I was still pretty upset. <laughs> 
but yeah. So uh, that they sounds like that's what they were showing you. We're here. We're here. Yep. <laughs> yep. We haven't left. We're here. We're still we're watching. <laughs> You're going through your shit, but we're here. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks, right? guys. We're letting you, you know, just like parents let their kids go through their stuff, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's it's interesting it. that, that you say you're not going to hurt any, anyone anymore. And I don't remember, I don't have any memory as a soldier hurting others. I um, I do remember being in train in combat and in training, that kind of, not in combat, but in training. But I don't remember actually hurting any other beings. The, um, but I remember... I have memory of um, being in some kind of a training room where I'm doing like Qigong and things like that. And also, um, what's it called? Not Kung Fu, but the other one. Uh, oh, I used to know it. Because <laughs> uh, I had an experience where I was there. It's um, where you use your own body to... Um, like Tai Chi... No. no. Uh, anyway. Jido. No, um, gosh, something like judo, but it's um, where you use your own body, that type of thing. But I was doing yeah. that type of training. And uh, I had a experience re recently, a few months back, maybe six months or nine months back, where I just pop up in a physical experience. I'm there and I'm holding a EMP rifle in my arm. Mm -hmm. And I'm, and it's big. It's a big gun. It's a big rifle, and it's heavy. And I'm thinking, as me, how can I hold this thing with one arm? But I'm probably holding the trigger. And we were, I was with some other people, and we were um, shooting bots, and we were like in an underground place or something like that. But it was really, really bright. There were three or four of us, and we're talking on a headset. And I, and there's some bots with around these uh, uh, containers really colorful containers and I point over there. I said, I got the blue one. The other one said, okay, I got that red one and I got this blue one. We're shooting and I could hear the pulse and feel the pulse of the, I know exactly how much pulse I have and when to shoot it. <laughs> and I'm like, I mean, that experience lasted a while and then we're on a train talking about our mission and I see the beings around me were some that ragtag company with, um, or like mercenaries kind of thing where we got our stuff with us and everything. And it's like, mm -hmm. this is nuts. That's the only time I remember actually shooting some kind of a weapon. Yeah. I, I knew they, well, originally I only had memories of being in a lab and then they were watching from these windows what I would do. And, uh, I've, yeah, I, I just shredded people. Really? And it was, okay. yeah. But when I had the dream, I was like, oh, that was a weird dream. Yeah. You know, that's, that was, that's odd. Mm -hmm. And I remember they, they gave me a nickname in the dream because I couldn't lose. And uh, so they would keep like testing my abilities, like upping it to different levels and, uh, at one point, I had this image come through, and it was just this flash. Uh, I was sitting with somebody um, eating lunch at a, at a picnic bench, and we just had this flash come through, and there was body parts everywhere. Oh. And I was in a tunnel. And uh, I remember there was there was children. And I, I was I was scared to death to look at what that might be, you know, like what is that connected to? What what is that, you know? And I I I had this horrible feeling about it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so in hypnosis, like this last one that I did, like I I explored that as well. Mm. And I was in this trance because every time they sent me on a mission i was in this trance and i got like sent an mk in. ultra kind of thing yeah 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 i i was very physically different too when i got sent um then i was in this trance and 
these soldiers came in and I was protecting what was in the tunnel, like what it was connected to. And I wasn't fighting for the good team, but I wasn't, mm. I didn't realize it at, at that time. You know, I was just mm -hmm. playing my video game, so to speak. Yeah. So when I realized what was happening, like in hypnosis, man, I just started crying because it was, you know, realizing you're, you're doing something that you don't really want to be doing and you didn't realize right. what you're doing. Yeah. That's kind of what I think is or feel that I just don't want to see it. You know, yeah. I haven't, I haven't opened up that door. Yeah. That's, I, um, I think there's a reason we get blocked usually yeah. from seeing those combat experiences. So mm -hmm. like with the thing I was telling you earlier about saying I'm a sovereign being to that ET experience and that went to this chaotic scene and the scene was like really just like this jumble of things that didn't make any sense and it was chaotic and there was like it was some sort of scuffle or whatnot but it was just yeah. i don't know i couldn't make any sense of it it was just these moving pictures all over really fast and then i woke up and i was like that was really weird uh so when i went back in hypnosis to recover like what was i being screened from when i said i'm a sovereign being uh the one, the tall gray in the background came forward really quick and he was going to, I guess he grabbed my arm or something, but it scared me. Like he was trying to calm me down, but he moved so fast. It scared me. And I, I went like this and I broke his arm. Oh, wow. And so they hurried up and put me back and then they put this screen memory over me. So I didn't remember hurting them. Mm. Okay. That makes sense. Wow. Yeah. You know, you're not the first person I've heard that has um, accidentally fighting back has hurt one of the gray beans or one of those beans. With yeah. And just automatically fighting. Yeah. I felt really bad when I remembered it, mm -hmm. you know, because like it startled me. It scared me. And I realized that they weren't really, they didn't have any nefarious intent as far as I could tell. They were still loving beings and like my earliest memory from them i was also in hypnosis by the way uh, but i was a baby uh, i said when's the earliest time i had experiences with them but i was a baby sitting on the floor of the ship looking up at this tall gray being and i was worried about the life that i was going to live and he kept reassuring me that it's going to be okay <laughs> boy that sounds familiar <laughs> yeah it's going to be okay all right <laughs> you're gonna be okay yeah <laughs> yeah i know it's like really what was i thinking but mm -hmm. hey yeah, somebody are. has to do it right uh-huh <laughs> somebody's got to i guess oh. <laughs> it sure isn't boring i'll say that that's true you know like with all the without all the uh the horrible stuff like the really interesting stuff does make it fun <laughs> I will say that like all yeah. the weird gifts and things and the and the mystical experiences that I have the, the really profound like spiritual awakening and openings those mm -hmm. are all amazing yeah and I think that's really how I come to terms with all the other stuff and the shadow stuff and it's it was hard for me to look at but when you look at like how we're expanding and what's needed to expand to be your greatest light then we have to go into that stuff and look at it yeah. now, somebody told me that the trees with the deepest roots have the biggest branches you know i love that i love that yeah so i was just going to say that i've learned that the people who have the really challenging experiences i like to say challenging or you know are the ones that have the most growth and can and can reach the highest levels who have the you know who are able to have the courage to explore the depths yeah yeah and overcome them <laughs> and overcome them yes definitely yes. and forgive them and, and get through them mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. huge yeah yeah forgiveness is is mm -hmm. a big piece right yeah anything that you hold in shadow keeps you there Anything that you hold in darkness keeps you in darkness. You're so wise, my friend. So you, you have a practice. Let's talk about your practice. 
Uh, well, my practice came from all of my experiences, you know, that's really was my biggest teacher was my experiences themselves. Yeah. Like my, uh, the first time I ever did a healing was when I was in Iraq and I was on my mom. Mm. So talking about like, we developed that really strong telepathic bond. And at that time, uh, there was a moment there where, you know, because I've just briefly mentioned her history, she was very depressed and suicidal. And I just had this knowing, like, I needed to act now. I need to do something now. If I don't, she's going to hurt herself. And so I didn't know what to do. But there was this part of me reaching out to the universe. And I said, I don't know what to do. I'll do anything. And it was that asking with an openness that I was taking a shower. And this hologram of her popped up in front of me where I could see her light body. And I saw these dark spots in her abdomen and the, the energy was kind of just guiding me what to do. So I raked it out and I filled it with light and I could zoom out and see the whole property. And so I started shifting the, the land itself and then I zoomed back in and I back on the body and then I started working on the body and I kept going back and forth on the land and the body. And where she lives, there was, uh, it's a high degree of, uh, meth addicts and like mm. so it was like bodfish california so there's a high level of of convicts and addicts and things over there it's like this little podunk town mm -hmm. uh, just east of uh burbank is it burbank no um what's the other town that's the city that's north anyway yeah not, i think about california yeah, it's not Burbank. Yeah. It's the other B that's north oh, that's okay. from LA. Anyway, okay. Just fell out. Berkeley? Uh, not Berkeley. Um, or that's a college. I don't know anything about I'll, it. I'll remember it when we get okay. off the call. Okay. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, aside the point, like that's where she yeah. was living. So like the land needed. And I, I didn't really think about it then. I was just being guided to go back and forth. And uh, I I couldn't get anything, and I tuned in, uh, and I was like, oh, that's odd. I I usually can connect with her, but I'm not getting anything. And I tried to call her. I couldn't get a hold of her. And the next day, it happened again at exactly the same time, no less. And I didn't plan it that way. It just I happened to be both times when I'm in the shower. You no, know, and I think it's just because I was just relaxed and not paying attention. That's a good time. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I was like, uh, oh, yeah, I hope she can't see me. Doing <laughs> <laughs> <Right? laughs> my work. And then, um, but yeah, both times lasted about 20 minutes. And then after that, it was like about two days later, she said she felt these waves of energy go over her that was so intense. And she passed out the first day. Uh, she had to lay down because it was super intense and then passed out the first day for 18 hours. Whoa. And the next day she passed out, happened again, same thing, laid down, passed out for 12 hours. And then she woke up and all the pain in her body was gone. She's the happiest that she'd been in 15 years, she said. And she was outside guarding for the first time in six months. Wow. So, yeah, complete transformation. And so like that was what got me to really start paying attention to things, obviously. Nice. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So you you use that gift and that ability in in your practice now? Um, it's kind of evolved from then because okay. I I used to be very, very, very clairvoyant to where, like I said, everything I saw with my physical eyes, it was in the room. It mm -hmm. looked sometimes it would look like a hologram in the room when it's more of an energy, but it was still very present with my physical eyes. Sometimes it would be a little bit more hazy. Sometimes it'd be like something was right there. And I'd be sitting there seeing something like, do you see this? And somebody who's standing next to me wouldn't, but they would feel it. Right. Yeah. And at some point, uh, I started getting a lot of these nose bleeds and something started shifting. And so it, it changed a little bit. And I think they tried to like, maybe when they stopped using me in the program in that way, shut off some of the things. Oh, I came across okay. some literature that said they, they actually sometimes will remove a piece of the brain, but in its place, I became very, very, and my, my clairvoyance comes through still just not near as strong as it did then. 
So I can see like a hazy image of things. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it comes in and there's something that turns on more vivid, but mostly it's this hazy image of things. And um, that's interesting because that happened. The same thing happened to me. Really? Yes. After my that, head injury and my NDE, yeah. I was seeing, I mean, full blown clairvoyance, like crazy, like, just like what you described. And then I had an experience in my meditation where I was in an underground, going underground somewhere. And, um, and it was really dark and I was walking into like a cave or something. It was a room like a cave and there was, looked like just really creepy feeling negative stuff and like mm -hmm. meat hanging on hooks kind of thing and there was someone mm -hmm. sitting there uh some kind of being uh that was really creepy creepy and and i'm standing there looking at it and the being turns and looks at me and i see a door like just come down over my third eye and i haven't been able to get it back that clear like it was since I have, I mean, I have it just like you described where it's kind of hazy sometimes, but every once in a mm -hmm. while I get hits where it's yeah. clear. That's yeah, weird. in its place, the clairsentience kicked in really yeah. strong. So I'm super clairsentient and claircognizant. Yeah, yeah. And I'll, I'll hear things and hear voices and whatnot. So everything mm -hmm. else kind of took in and stepped in to take over mm -hmm. that little gap. You know, my guidance told me that that was, that, that was a good thing that I needed. I relied too much on my clairvoyance. I, I got the same message, okay. the same message, yeah. because uh, when I was looking at things, too, you can look and be – this is what I discovered along the way, too. You can look and be fooled by what you're seeing, but when you have the clairsentience and the claircognizance, it's harder to fool you. Right. So you have right. that heart knowing and that heart opening. So screen mm -hmm. memories, like, they don't affect me the same way anymore. I'm like, yeah. oh, what's this, guys? And I'll clear it out. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So, and like, nice. if I'm in, if I'm doing hypnosis on somebody and they have an ET uh, history mm -hmm. and there's something blocking them now, now I can go in there and, and wipe that away and like, let's clear that up. Yeah. And then I've been able to remove these, these mental blocks. Oh, nice. nice. So I also like been working on myself the same way, but I think there's a physical component. So like, I just keep going in meditation and working on, um, connecting back into the fullness not even thinking about it and being a repairing sense but just connecting back into the fullness and that seems to be helping bring the things back forward again good yeah well we could go on for a very long time here's <laughs> it's been almost two hours that's all right oh yeah that's cool so so you have a practice in the portland area correct and i'm assuming you also do remotely like through zoom and that kind of yeah, thing, right? mo mostly I do remotely through Zoom. Okay. Uh, that's typically just what I do. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll, I will go in, like I use my um, empathic, uh, psychic empathic abilities and then merge with somebody and I'll see the distortions in their energy centers. And I'll use both of our higher components and bring it in to clear that space and open it back up. So that's oh, okay. typically the work nice. that I do with people now. Nice. Okay. So I will put your information in the details, but go ahead and let uh, people ha know how to contact with you if they would like to. I mean, it's okay for people to contact you, right? Of course. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think my phone number is on the website, but you can find my email. Um, I think it's on the website too, but you can find me at brandonlapier.com and that's L-A-P-I-E-R.com. Nice. And if you want to email me, uh, newhumanuniversity at gmail.com is, is what you can reach me at through email. Nice. So I'd like to ask you a couple of questions that I'm asking my guests. Okay. Sure. I, so what is your view of the reason for us being here on the planet, the human experience, the purpose of life? Uh, I think we're here to grow, to, to have experiences, to find meaning through the separation. You know, we find our meaning through all the experiences that we have. We understand like the contrast of things because we come here 
into the separation and the illusion of separation. Uh, you think about it like we don't really need to grow as beings because uh, on the other side, we're, we're whole and complete. We already have all of that. So we come here into the separation to learn this through this separation in a new way. And in that, we find our meaning of things and our way of things. And you can look at like all the people who have these NDE experiences and a very common question, no matter what someone's experienced. Sometimes it's very beautiful. Sometimes it's very hard. Sometimes they've uh, done horrible things, but they always ask them, what did you learn? Right. And I think it's that, what did you learn that gives, it, it gives fullness to the all that is, it, it feeds the all that is and helps that understand itself more. And so that's, that's why we're here. Nice. Thank you. Also, for those that are watching, if anyone's watching that is going through a really tough time right now, what words would you like to share with them to, to help them on their journey? Hmm. No matter what you've been through, no matter what you've done, no matter what you've experienced, there is always hope. There is always the potential for your choosing something different. And you're never alone, whether you realize that or not. You always have help. You always have guidance. You just have to ask for it. You may not get exactly it in the way that you think you should, but you will always get it when you ask with an open heart and a completely open soul with open arms. So it doesn't matter how bleak things look for you or how much you've been carrying with you. All you have to do is ask for help and you can begin to see that lesson. Nice. Yeah. A lot of times and I'm guilty of it too. We forget to ask for help. That is true. <laughs> yeah. That is true. <laughs> we get caught up in, in the chaos of the moment and of the situation and experience and we forget. Yeah, totally. Awesome. Anything else you want to share before we close? Mm. I just, I really enjoyed talking with you and um, thanks for having me on the show. Sure. Well, thank you for being here and we'll have to do it again sometime. I'm sure there's a lot more we can talk about as Definitely. our memories keep uncovering. So. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Well, thank you everyone for being here and um, don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, all that good stuff. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks, Brandon. Thank you. Thanks everybody. Yeah.